Let me try to move here in a space that has no room for anything. Chair too short. Tables too big. <clears throat> That's how we like to do it. <laughs> Join the team. Oh my god, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> hey team, it's McGuire Review, and today we're going to take a look at some brand new stuff from WizKids and Critical Role. Now, if you do follow WizKids Miniatures and or Critical Role, uh, the RPG live show, well, recorded live, um, you will know that they've done a number of models now and sets kind of in a partnership uh, so far. They've had a couple different releases. We've covered most of that on the channel. Here's some new stuff that they're doing. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna really gonna focus this video today around the brand new Bell's Hells set because I think that's really cool and I really like the way that they've done it here. We have right in the center, but then there's a number of other models that have been released as well, and they kind of cover a wide variety of different things. Uh, you can use these from more of a general uh, perspective with any RPG as well as anything across the Critical Role. Uh, IPs, like if you have the Tal'Dorei um, box set from Beetle and Grimm's, or if you have the actual, just if you just have the book and you bought that, uh, you will find models that you'll be able to use across that different um, campaign space, as well as stuff from different um, seasons that they've done as well. There's some stuff here that's actually from their first their first season. Uh, that they did, which is interesting, and let's just go right there. So I'm going to set this aside, the, the Bell's Hells. We're going to get to that here in just a minute. And I want to look at some of these. So some of these are kind of generically named. Like this one just says Revenge Demon. Okay, really cool model. Here's another one, good example. It just says Female Sphinx, right? And I think there's a male possibly as well, right? So that's there's been models in the past that have been released that are somewhat similar to this in the WizKids brand, but this one is Critical Role brand, so it's all about you know what you're kind of looking for. I really like the uh, Wisher Pixies here. This is a cool little set. You'll see all these on the up close miniature cam. Male human sorcerer merchant and tiger demon. Okay, that one's uh. That one's a mouthful, but two really cool models. But I did want to give an example, here it is, right here, of this. I'm not sure why they. some of these are named and some of these are not. So, good example, uh, these are fey werewolves, nothing there. Um, I, I know these are characters, I just don't remember the actual names of them. Here's a named character example, so the Laughing Hand and the Fetish Wanderer. Um, so, th this, this is... This is actually from Campaign 2, uh, which is pretty cool. There's Season 2 or Campaign 2. You'll see the Laughing Hand uh, and that, that, that winged demon that traveled with the Laughing Hand. So this is a really cool one. If This one I highly recommend out of all the ones that are here if you're looking for some named characters. Plus, these models are awesome. The way they're done. I love the Laughing Hand. That's a really cool model. But this one here is just called Vampire and Necromancer Nobles. And it is clear that this is Silas and Delilah. So I don't know why they didn't just call... I mean, the models are dead on the Silas and Delilah. Vampire. Silas is like a vampire. Delilah is a necromancer. <clears throat> I mean, it's just dead on, right? So why not just call this Silas and Delilah? I, I'm not sure why. There might have been some, some weird rights things there. I, I don't know why, but... This is Silas and Delilah. If you're looking for those models and those characters, that's exactly what this is. Um, so you have like an example like that. So I did find there was a couple little finicky things. I didn't really understand why it was the way it was. But um, I highly recommend these two boxes if you're looking for some named characters. And they're dead on to what those characters uh, would look like. So we'll go ahead and put these away. You saw those kind of up front uh, on the miniature cam. Do some more YouTube short and Instagram stuff. We'll get our little pile of critical role models here. Uh, and let's get right into the Bell's Hells set. Now, very impressed with this set. This set is pretty cool. I like the way that they have it packaged. It came in a nice little small form factor, which I thought was nice for storage. 
I really like the way that they did the kind of the window box look there. You can clearly see all the characters, and it, it's really well done. The window box, they're, they're organized well. You can see all the characters. It, it's really a nice display of it, and I probably will leave it in this box. This is a box that I will keep, and I'll probably just have it on a shelf that way. And then if I need it or I want it for some reason, I got the whole set ready to go. I'm probably not going to take it out of the package. Well, outside of the unboxing and the review of this stuff, uh, today. Now, the other thing that I'll mention is I do have both of the other sets. They did a set from Campaign 1 and a set from Campaign 2. And uh, I do feel like these are by far the best they've done so far for a couple different reasons. One, the sculpts and the, the models are really, really well done. They're really, really well painted and they're painted, right? The other two prior sets for their different groups were not painted. They were done by a different company. Obviously, these being done by WizKids, they're going to be the pre-painted models. Uh, now, it does say on the back that this is a collector's set. It contains 10 figures beautifully painted to the highest levels. And I will say that I do agree they are painted to the highest levels from, from what WizKids does, okay? Okay. So from the, the, the quality that WizKids offers, they are definitely painted to a very high level and a very high standard. There is a ton of different colors on some of these models, like a lot, and some very fine lines. There's a lot of shading. There's a lot of blending of colors. So all of that looks really good. I like that you got a version of Chetney, which by far is my favorite character in this campaign. Like, by far is my favorite character. Chetney's awesome, and you've got the wolf version of Chetney, which I think is pretty cool. The only thing that's a little bit uh, odd to me, uh, and maybe they made this before they really got into a lot of the content, is I think they should have made the wolf model smaller. It would have, like, a little bit taller than Chetney, but still, like, because they make all these jokes about it being the wolf terrier, and this looks like a full-size, like, six-foot-two werewolf the model that's in here. And I think it would have just been thematically better and it would have been funnier if it was like a smaller, like kind of wider, but smaller, you know, werewolf that would have been maybe four or five inches taller than Chetney, not, you know, more than twice the size of Chetney. Okay. So that, that's the only thing I'll say right off the bat as far as scaling Initially, just looking at this set, that would have been, in my opinion, a much better design. We'll put this, no, we won't. We don't want a block bear um, on this. Okay, doesn't look, no. So there's no tape on the inside, which is fine, because it's nice and tight in that box. So let's get each one of these out. And they are marked at the underside. They do have the name as well as their number. So here's 10 out of 10. It's Ashton Graymore. Um looks pretty awesome i love the way that hammer looks the hammer looks really good and i i didn't even notice that uh, i guess the tip of it's kind of like crystal-esque as well um, i like how they use that color changing uh, or it's, it's a really glossy paint uh, or a little really metallic paint kind of on the side i think they could have done they could have done the head i think a little bit better because it it does appear that more of his head is that you know cloudy kind of glassy crystal so i think they could have done a little bit more on his head and and actually i i would have been good if they would have used the same material um okay it's still it still is really good it's still really cool right I just again this is a review so and i've seen them do stuff like that before so it definitely would have been a little bit of a harder of a build but um that's cool and then on the back it says don't just okay that's awesome Okay, so really good, Ashton. This is 8 out of 10, Laudna. Laudna is currently out of the campaign. We'll see if she makes a return. Um, more than likely, they will. Okay, and then here is Werewolf 7 out of 10. And again, this is Chetney's version of the, the werewolf when he changes... Um, and you can see how little Chetney is. I just love this Chetney model. It's probably my favorite model, too, out of the entire thing. So that, to me, is just not scaled properly at all. Like, this is almost like a reuse of a werewolf model. Um, I don't know if there's one exactly like this, but it, it feels very reuse. 
it just it should have been maybe like this tall and just just smaller. I think it would have thematically looked a lot better. Okay, that's just my opinion, but it would have looked a lot better with this set, and it wouldn't have been a difficult thing to do. It actually would have, it should have been cheaper because it was it's a, it's less of amount of plastic unless unless they would had to create a very very custom mold that they didn't have anything like because normally werewolves like this would not be really small like that. Okay. This is Fern Callaway, one of tens. They got Fern marked as the number one. Love Fern. She, that that's an amazing model. I love this model. Love the use of the translucent there on the staff. And then there's a little tiny bit that I didn't actually even notice was in the package that's on, um, or no, that, that's not the staff. She's holding, it's like a ball of like magic. Over here is the staff. And there's a little bit of that magic kind of that magic sort of translucent um, plastic they use. And it's got a real deep yellowy orange. I love the hair and the little bits of flowers and the hair, all the color around the bottom. There's lots of color on this one. This is done so well. This may be that this is probably the most intricate model out of the set by far. So hopefully Ashley is um, pleased with that because that is by far the most intricate model that's in the set. Okay, here we go uh, with uh, Imogen uh, Timult. Timult, yeah. Imogen Timult, I think that's how you pronounce the last name. Three of ten, looking good. Okay, Imogen is a little bit more of your, uh, I would call this more of kind of a classic type model, although I think they've done a really nice job with the hair here. So the hair is just kind of flowing to the side. It's long, it's got a lot of sculpting in it. Um, I like the way they've done sort of these boots into like this leg, um, kind of like a, it's a dagger. It looks like a knife or a dagger kind of stuck there holding on, on the leg, which is a really good look. Um, very cool. I like the sort of psychic purple energy coming out of the hands. It's a, it's a good looking model. Uh, but I would, you know, in comparison, I use that terminology. It's kind of your, your, your classic sort of person that's posing but they've done it really, really well. It's got a really classy look, very elegant. This is this is probably the most elegant piece that's in that's in the set. Really well done there on the Imogen. Okay, next one we've got. Now it was nice to see Dorian. So Dorian Storm was uh, included in this set as well. So congrats there. That's pretty cool to have um, your character in the main set. Five of ten, and Dorian's looking really good. I think they did a nice job with Dorian. I do, at first I thought it was kind of strange, but I do like the yellowy orange that they chose as the inside of his cloak that contrasts against that silver and that bluish purple. And then his skin tone is like a blue. So the skin tone with this orangey, the skin tone with this orangey uh, yellow was kind of odd when I first saw it uh, in the pack. But the more I look at it, it actually is a pretty cool looking model. And that color goes really, really well against the purpley blue of his outfit, as well as the uh, bits of like chrome, like silver. It's not a bright chrome. It's like a, just a metallic chrome, more like a, uh, not a polished, but just a, you know, not a polished shiny chrome. It's more of just if it looked like it was made of, um, kind of an iron. Now, I don't know if that really goes exactly with the artwork. I, I do think it looks a little shinier when they show the artwork, but I but I much prefer it like this than if they would have went with a super shiny. I think it would have been too much. And they probably toned it down because they went with this brighter orangey yellow. Dorian is a bard, so it's got the ute uh, there on the back. It's kind of got, got that guitar there on the back. Um, now, the only thing I would say with that is they made it the exact same color as the back of his cloak. Not sure why. It doesn't look bad. It looks good, but I think it would have stood out and it would have looked even better if they would have chose a different color. So, not sure, not sure why they did that. Doesn't look bad, but would have looked a lot better if they just would have painted that one piece a different color. And they didn't even have to go with a standard brown. They could have used another type of color to make it look more magical. They could have put some, you know, maybe some 
design on it. I don't know. I think that was kind of, they could have done a better job with that. Okay, that's Dorian. Here we have Mr. This is the little monkey that is with Fern. Um, Mr. is 2 of 10. I think Mr. is pretty sizable as far as... Oh, Mr.'s broke. Dang it. All right, I can fix this. So, Mr.'s hand, uh, and it's not... It, it, the, the, mo the model is physically broke. His arm broke off his hand. So, uh, that's not that big of a deal. I can just set that right back down and super glue that. But just to call that out, um, it did break. Not sure why. It's pr it probably just it's a super delicate little connection right there. Uh, I wish it would have just broke the whole hand from it, but the hand is still glued down. The, the arm is snapped off. Uh, but I'll super glue that, and you never will see that. It's just, again, I think it needs to be called out because not everybody will want to super glue it and mess with it. They want, to they want it to come perfect out of the package. These do retail for a little bit more expensive than most of your normal like sets. I can't remember offhand exactly what this is. You can look this one up, but um, it, it is it is more expensive. Okay, do love the use of the little uh, piece of uh, plastic here, kind of showing that flame flickering off the tail. I think it would have looked good if they would have put. And again, who knows when these were actually designed and made in the process. But if they would have put a little piece of flaming poo in the hand, that would have been even funnier and would have went right along with the campaign. Maybe made that Paul come back a little bit further and like just all it would have had to have done is a little bit of brown that would have trans transitioned into translucent red. Uh, it would have been a little flaming, uh, little flaming seed, right? They uh, they call it. So that's done really well. Very cool. There's some intricate details that are on Mister. The face is done extremely well and tight, and there is some like uh, piping or some lines that's put on uh, on the monkey as well. So that looks really good. Scale wise, seems kind of big, but I don't. If they would have made it smaller, you probably would have lost a lot of that detail. Um, but that looks really good. Okay, here comes uh, fresh cut grass. Uh, and it is fresh cut grass. It's not FCG on here, uh, or letters as they call fresh cut grass. This is nine of ten for fresh cut. Um, we've got a nice little uh, cloud burst kind of coming off his wheel there, which is nice. Uh, I would have put a little bit of blue in that because it's really hard to see and it actually blends in with the base. And I didn't even see it until I got it out of the package. That would have been a lot more visual if they would have put. Uh, forget that. Not blue. They should have used gray. Made it a little bit like smoky with a little bit of gray at the bottom that kind of wisped up through it. They do that all the time in these plastics. They should have done it in this one. Uh, it's just the exact same color as the base, and it just kind of gets lost, and you don't even see it unless you look close. And it really is a nice design piece. So that's the only reason why I call that out. Other than that, the model looks really good. I think they did a good job with it. Love the little logo there he's got on the front. Um, his little backpack is really cool. Got a number of little things hanging off the backpack it's all his little attachments it's got like a hammer thing a hook um, like a saw blade it, lo it looks really cool i really like the design and the model with the the backpack and all the stuff hanging off that's very neat the only other thing i would say dynamic wise with this one that would have been cool is if one of these arms um you know, if he was coming in, maybe one of the arms was sort of out and it was like blasting something, like maybe like a grappling hook, like instead of the grappling hook hanging off the backpack, maybe he's blasting like a grappling hook would have been really cool, I think. Uh, other than that, I think this is a pretty neat little model and they did a good job with it. Okay. Last one. Last one is our Orum of the Arashari. This is a 4 of 10, and Orem looks great. I would say Orem, much like uh, Imogen here, is more of your classic uh, model, your classic model, your classic pose, but again, done very elegantly. I really like they used, and they're, they're using a lot more of this now, these metallic paints that really show the color and the shine. When the light hits it and you turn around, it really looks good. I like that they went with the small Buckner, or Buckler, uh, Buckner or Buckler? Buckner. I think it's Buckner. <laughs> the small shield, uh, round small shield, looks really good. That short sword, and it does have, um, if you if you know Orem's uh, sword, it's got some kind of scripting on it. 
did some engraving, some scripting, and they did that on the sword here, which I think is really cool. And there's also on, is it on both of his arms? I think on only on one of his arms, he, that same sword arm, he's got some really nice tribal scripting tattoo work as well that's done in a black, uh, which is nice. It really you know, it really catches your eye on that on that lighter skin that he has. That looks really good. Really like that. And the face, the facial structure, sculpting, and paint job on this model is done really well. Very well. Uh, maybe better than some, yes, maybe better than some of the other ones. Yeah, I would say actually better than some of the other ones. It's done really well. Really like Orem. I'm going to go back to, to um, Ladna here. I think I, I feel like I skipped this model um i do like how they they put these two extra little um pieces of like you know death magic or whatever that's this icker that's kind of coming up out of this piece they could have had sort of dripping off her hands or or something similar to this but maybe like going down i'm glad they did something like this that looks completely different and it does look really cool because it sits off of the model. It's not all connected. These pieces are just glued to the front of this. So that separation actually adds a lot of depth to this particular piece that none of the other ones have. It's almost like this one is already based. So that I think is really cool. Now, to be fair, they do have some of that black ichor sort of on her hands as well as it's coming down. But... Um, but that's but that's all it is. That looks pretty neat. We got a little pate. Looks like hanging off the side there of of the belt. That's pretty neat. Um, and there's something else like some type of little satchel or something that's hanging off the back here. But then but then that's it. And I love how they did the actual. Uh, we'll call it a skirt here on the model. It's got a lot of uh, depth to it, and it's actually got a print and a pattern. I think those are spider webs, if I had to guess. Maybe they're not. Um, that are sort of like printed into it that go kind of all the way around. And that looks really cool as well. That's an extra added touch of detail that really wasn't necessary. They could have just left it black with like the little, you know, uh, folds. But they've got that little pattern sort of stamped in it. And you, you can totally see it. Uh, and that looks really cool. That adds that adds a lot of detail to this particular model because there there is a lot of dark colors on this model. So some of that stuff can be hard to see. So I think adding that extra little print made a made a difference. Okay, that's all the models. That's everything from Bell's Hells. A brand new set from WizKids. We went a little long here through this one, but you know, this is a special set, and there's a lot of people that are going to probably want this set. Uh, because it's the full set, totally painted, and you, you kind of get everybody. Now, again, depending on how long the campaign goes on, some of these characters may physically die. Uh, we don't have any Bertrude. Uh, I can't remember the uh, the Bertrude something. Uh, he's not here in the set. Obviously, he only, I think he only made it to like episode five, maybe, and then he died. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad that happened because we got Chetney and Chetney is absolutely an amazing character. I really hope Chetney makes it all the way through the entire campaign. That's what I'm going to be sad about if we lose Chet because Chetney is just it's just he's, he's hilarious. I mean, he's such a funny character. Probably the best character I've ever seen him play. So, really really well done on the little Chet. All right, team, if you see the Bell's Hells out there in the wild, this may be something that you definitely want to pick up, especially if you are a Critical Role fan. So keep rolling them, crits. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time.